Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be reviewing Windows 11 after 69 days of using it. Overall, my experience here hasn't been bad at all. I am enjoying what they've done with Windows 11 and can't wait for the release for everybody to be able to use it. The fact that you have to have TPM 2.0 to run it does suck, but overall I love the design that they've made. I've been getting really used to it, launching things from the bottom here. Now that we have all our menu items here in the middle of the screen, if we click on the search bar, this thing has been pretty great to me. It's a little redundant. There's a type to search here as well. And then you have the second one by default. Of course, you could probably remove this. They do serve a little bit of a different purpose. One searches more expansively than the other, but it's something that has been a little annoying because across multiple monitors, I do have issues on my second monitor. It doesn't tend to work quite right. It doesn't want to pop up sometimes. Sometimes it does. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm still trying to figure that out for myself. Still trying to figure that out for myself. And then if we go into settings, and overall I like what they've done with the settings here. They've made it look a lot more modern, much like you would find on a tablet. Of course, we have things blown up here so you can see things very well, but we'll go back to normal scaling in a bit so you can look at this in all its glory in that scaling as well. But we got really good theming options here. I've been messing around with the backgrounds. I've left it pretty much the normal. That way there's not too much change here, but we can go to a lighter color just to see how things look here. It looks wonderful. I, I personally love the fact that you can also put animated backgrounds and they work quite fluidly. Now, Windows 11 is a bit of a memory hog. Uh, they actually suggest four gigs plus for this new Windows release. And then if we right click, they've changed this up quite a bit. It looks better. In my opinion, it makes more sense. They've kind of uh, thrown stuff into categories now instead of just having a full fledged thousand page menu item list. So this one makes a lot of sense to me. I love the fact that you can open up anything in Windows terminal now by default instead of the command prompt. They really needed to upgrade to this and it's great that they've done this. Of course, I haven't quite configured this yet in my old Windows system. This looked much better. I'd probably have to log into my other computer in order to show that off. But anyways, for you, those of you who are not familiar with the Windows terminal, there's different things that you can launch directly from here. And if you have WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux enabled, then you'll actually get a terminal selection that you can use for Linux as well. It's a great tool to have, so make sure to check that out because the Linux support here is great. I'm a huge fan of Linux and using WSL in order to get those amazing commands that you would on Linux has been working great for me. Uh, in the past, I've used to install Sigwin, which would get me around the system and install packages from Linux that would help me navigate things and use specific tools and utilities from Linux. But now WSL takes care of all of that, so I don't really have to bother. The one thing I'll mention is WSL2 does still have issues mainly if you're running other hypervisors such as uh, VirtualBox, VMware, what have you, on the same host computer, you may have issues when launching machines once you've enabled WSL. So keep an eye out for that if you do run into issues. Moving on, the background, we can always change the next desktop background if you want, and it does update a little bit here, changes up the colors a little bit. Let's go back to the themes, and we'll switch it to the one I was using before, which looks like uh, a bunch of Pringles across the screen. I think this one's really funny. Uh, it really does look like Pringles to me anyway. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you think the same thing. I can't believe I've already been using this thing for 69 days. It's ridiculous. But hey, I'm having fun. I'm actually quite surprised at the overall release of this. There wasn't too many problems from the get-go and I still think this is a great design overall. It feels great. Yes, they've made changes to the UI, but uh, not so much that you'll be lost or even miss the old layout, at least in my opinion, because if you do click on the file manager or file explorer, you pretty much have all the same stuff. It's just a matter of they've changed up the top, which no longer is a ribbon. I didn't think the ribbons made much sense anyway. They took up way too much space. Linux has definitely consolidated that in most desktop environments. So it looks like they took a page from the Linux handbook and uh, kind of consolidated things themselves. The one thing I haven't quite gotten used to is Let's just go to the desktop. We'll create something new and I'm going to create a folder. So with the folder here now, new folder, if I right click, we have these icons now instead of menu items, which isn't a big deal. We're just getting used to these. I still haven't been able to do completely. Uh, so you have your rename here. I like renaming things quite a bit, deleting things. You have a copy and a cut. So if I wanted to rename, I'd have to click here and type in the new name. So it's something to get used to. I still haven't quite yet. There's always the show more 
options, which actually gets you back to the old menu. This is something that they've done quite well, which is give you both options of having the old style menus as well as the new style menus. That way you can't get completely lost. And one place where we'll definitely see that is if, is if we launch the control panel app, we'll notice that that looks very much the same as it used to before. And you can switch this, of course, to different icons. Now this looks like even Windows 7, perhaps. So there's some cross compatibility here, at least with the UI. And I really enjoy the fact that they've done that because I, at the end of the day, like using the old control panel. I'm just used to it. So it's easy for me to get around things, especially when I'm administering the computer. If we exit out of these, I'll tell you that the animations are quite quick. Here you can see it popping up from the bottom. And if we launch something, perhaps things launch super quick, things move super quick around the screen. I like the blur effects the enlarging animation and even adjusting things. Everything's super fluid. I haven't had any problems with that. I really enjoy them. Everything also feels faster on Windows 11. The startup, that launching of applications, interacting with apps. So let's just launch the Windows Store. Boom, it comes right up instantly. I really like that. There's a little bit of a redesign here. Not much to go into. You can kind of look at it right now and realize how it looks a little different, more tablet oriented. They're working on the Windows Store, although I really don't use it much. I think it's kind of worthless in my opinion, but again, that's just my opinion. One other thing that they've introduced, let's see here if we launch Brave perhaps. If we go up to the Maximize, you can split the pane, basically their window tiling manager here. If you don't want wind floating windows, you can select whatever format you want. So if we want it to go here, sure, on the right lower hand. If we want it to fill up a little bit more of the screen on the left hand side, if we want it equally as big on either side, smaller, all sorts of configurations, and then you can always go back to the normal maximized window. The snapping of windows isn't too bad. Uh, if you go over to the screen now, I have multiple screens, so it makes it a little harder. I don't have too many problems with this, but I don't use it too often anyway. When I'm focused, I'm focused on one thing, so I usually have that across my screen in the middle. It seems like a good addition, but I don't use it, so let me know if you do. Now we're gonna get into the worthless stuff. Uh, widgets are pretty much worthless to me. I have not used it, haven't signed in, haven't even bothered because of their lack of customization. You can't customize it. You're using Windows obsolete applications, which can get you information like the current weather or stock information or news, but I, I just don't like it. I don't like their design. I don't like the fact that there's really no third party widgets at the moment. Maybe they'll add that in in the future and maybe it'll get better. But for now, I don't really like anything about it, so I don't use it. Chat, I pretty much hide from the taskbar as soon as I get the installed version of Windows 11. Performance has been great. That's one thing I can say, and I'm very surprised about because there hasn't really been any incompatibility issues that I've ran into. All my rendering software works great here. My recording software, everything's been fine and dandy after 69 days of use. And in the bottom right corner, we have access to our wonderful notifications, sound and network support. We have our audio and what it's being used by. And then of course, our little taskbar icons, if we have anything extra running in the background, and I do there. Honestly, I thought Windows and Microsoft would have failed with their first attempt of releasing Windows 11, and there would be all sorts of performance issues shoes, but everything's just been such an easy transition. The only thing I can say is multiple monitors have some small issues, like not being in able to invoke certain things. I spoke about the search box on the second screen, but just a little fuzziness there, but overall great. I mean, if that's the only issues I've been ran running into, I think that's a great job by Windows. I can't wait until there's more customization softwares available for Windows 11. That way you can get really deep into the customization. Again, if you go to personalization, you do have a few options here, such as the background colors, themes, lock screen, touch keyboard, start taskbar fonts, and other things. A really quick way to change things around, we already did, but up here to select a theme, you can select one, see how that works. Of course, make sure to go to your privacy and security and go through at least the security portion of things. And then in general of the Windows permissions, make sure that the telemetry is all turned off, that they're not tracking everything you do. It's kind of hard with the Windows 11 update because they're using telemetry for developers, of course, in order to get feedback. And let's just change things back to normal here. If I go down, I can scale back to 100%. That way you can get a good look at how things actually look, feel. Let me exit out. And here is the desktop. You can fit plenty of icons at the bottom, middle of the screen. The Pringles look even better now. 
The menus are a great size. No scaling issues, none expected, just worked right out of the box. We'll delete something. So again, I always look for delete in here, but it's always this little trash can. Well, with Windows 11, I think they're really catching up to being an all-encompassing operating system without breaking the user experience because they've kept a lot of their old UI and meshed it in with the new. I'm excited for the release, although the TPM 2.0 thing is throwing a lot of people off. Hopefully, things change so people don't have to get new computers in order to install this who have decent hardware that can still support Windows 11. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.